Hi, so this new project that we're doing is called Digital Landscape. So in this image we have five different layers of land and they have trees on them and then we also have sky and the sky has sort of a cloudy sort of texture to it and then you also have some celestial being whether it's a moon or a sun depending on how we look at it. The trees get smaller as they get farther away and then the trees and the land masses also get lighter in color as they get farther away. Now this is we're creating the sense of depth so farther away meaning they get higher up in the picture and they get larger um, as far as the land masses go. So we're going to be working on this and we're going to take it step by step. What we're going to do first is we're going to make a, a new page. We're going to make a new image. So we're going to go up to the button that says create new. The size is going to be in inches and it's going to be 18 inches wide. Make sure it's set to inches and the height's going to be 12. The resolution is going to be 300 pixels per inch, background white, and you hit create. So if you hit the command button and the minus, you can actually get this zoomed back out a bit. You can also use the zoom tool on the toolbar, but the shortcut's the command plus and minus to zoom in and zoom out. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating these land masses. So each one is going to be its own layer. So right now we just have the background layer selected and we are going to add a new layer. And when we add a new layer, we're gonna use the lasso tool and we're going to create a line and create a shape that's like land. Okay. So what we do first is we're going to create a new layer. Hit the new layer button and you want to name this one since we're going to be doing five of them we want to name this one Mountain 1 and then of course we're going to have Mountain 2, Mountain 3, Mountain 4 and Mountain 5 but we're going to start off with this one. We use the lasso tool and we're going to go far down we're going to go about one sixth, sixth or so down below Okay, so you're going to be starting with some sort of line and it shouldn't be totally straight, it should kind of resemble like a land mass. You just kind of wave around, go around, wide berth around the outside, and then it connects to the other side. And if you don't like this, you can get rid of it by hitting Command D and starting again, but you want to keep it nice and low and wavy. So you have a lot of opportunity to kind of make it the way you want. And then once it looks good, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to be selecting a color. So the color family is going to be kind of important. So you can do pretty much any color at all. If you wanted to do green or blue or red, you can try it out. Um, I'm actually going to go with like a purple. You're going to start off with a dark color. And then you're going to be working up to the left, going lighter and lighter. So we're going to start off the bottom right-hand corner. So we're going to select a dark color down on the bottom right, and then as we go up, we're going to get lighter and lighter. Okay, so we start off with the one. And we use the paint bucket. Sometimes it's hidden, depending on what workspace you have. And you dump the color in. To get rid of the marching ants, you hit Command D. And now we're going to make another mass. We're going to call this one Mountain 2. And you double click on the title to get the to rename it. Use the lasso tool. So this line does not have to be parallel. You do want it to be wavy. It can actually go behind a little bit if you wanted it to. And once you like it, and again if you need to change it, you can change it. And as I said, it's okay if it goes behind some of the taller parts of the landmass. And once you like it, you're going to go pick a new color. And this one, we're going to go up to the 
to the left a little bit and up on top, sort of on a diagonal. And you can see the comparison, dump the color in. Command D to get rid of the marching ants. But you have to switch the order. You want Mountain 1 to always be on top, followed by Mountain 2. The new layer, Mountain 3, you need to keep doing the same process. So those layers are going to get take up more and more space. Probably by the time you get to Mountain 5, you'll probably have more than half of your um, page filled up. So you're going to go with a lighter color, you move that down, Command D will get rid of the selection for you. Make a new layer. And you can see that when I was making these, I, I had the lines purposely not parallel with one another. It makes it a little bit more realistic. And go a little higher, a little lighter. So we're on layer four, or mountain four. Rename it, dump the color in, and you'll find that naming them one, two, three, and four, it helps to keep the order because you always want mountain one to be on top. All right, this will be the last one. Oops, again, you mess up, start again. sure that you add a new layer. And dump the color in. Oh, pick the lighter color. And just making sure you switch the order. One, two, three, four, five. So you can, if you wanted to, you can take these land masses and kind of lift them up and down a little bit, but you don't want to lose the illusion. So you, you need to, you know, make sure you don't see the edges or the bottom of it, make sure it's all covered up. But there is a little bit of flexibility and a little playing around that you can do with these layers, but you just, you don't want to end up having the edge, the right edge or the left edge or the bottom edge visible because those are not going to be very realistic if you leave those alone. So we'll just put that back. And there we have it. That is how you do the land masses. And you can see that I'm about halfway up the page. All right, now that we have our land masses, the next thing we're going to do is the sky. So we're going to put a gradient in the sky. So we're going to be using the background layer for this sky. And what we're going to do is hit rename the background. We'll just work off of the background. So you can just double click on the background, the name, and you can rename this layer sky. And this layer is always going to be at the bottom. So now we're going to pick some gradients um, to use. So we're going to be using the gradient tool. And if you click on the bar up on top, you're going to be able to uh, edit the gradient. So you're going to click on the bottom and you're going to pick two colors. So you pick on, click on the left stop on the bottom left and then you're going to eventually pick the right. So just a word of advice is that to make it very, very contrasty, Use contrasting colors against the land. So if you have violet for your land, use something opposite, like yellow, orange for the sky. You can do whatever colors you want, but you want those two colors, by the way, to be analogous, being very similar. So we're going to go with an orange and a yellow here, and you can change it later, and you can decide on different colors. You can try them out and see what they look like. Um, but I'm going to go with something very, very different than the violet, something on the other side of the color wheel. So I'm going to go with yellow and I'll do like an orange. It's going to make it very contrasting. Now if I did something like a blue and a, you know, something kind of matching the background, I mean uh, matching the, the land, it's just going to look a little bit different. Okay. 
So after you pick your, your colors, you're going to go to the style. So there's different types of gradients. You have a linear gradient, and it works if make sure you're on the sky layer. And I can just make the other layers invisible just to get an idea. So going from top to bottom, it's going to look different than if I'm going from, if I drag it from bottom to top. Um, I can use the radial, and I can actually reverse the radial from orange to yellow to yellow to orange. Um, I don't think the angle gradient is going to look very good. It doesn't really look realistic. Same thing with the, uh, the diamond gradient. So you're probably better off sticking with the linear gradient and the radial gradient. You can see it doesn't really look too realistic. So we're going to go with this gradient and as you move your line and as you drag those lines longer and shorter it's going to change the transition of that gradient. If you go from top to bottom instead of bottom to top it's going to change the look. You can go diagonally if you'd like. You can try radial. So even though we're all making a gradient there are a lot of different varieties that you can do. And there's a lot of uh, modifications that you can make. Make it your own. So you get it to where you really want it to be. I think I, I, think I picked it. Oh, yeah, if you go very narrow, it's going to make that transition very, very quick. So try it out a number of times until you finally get what you want it to look like. So once you have it set up, that part of the sky is done. So now we're going to put some sort of celestial being, and I call it celestial being, but it's going to be a circle. So whether you want it to be the sky or you want it to be, I mean, uh, the sun or the moon, you're going to go to the elliptical selection tool, and you are going to, you want this to be a full circle. So go to change that style to fixed ratio, one to one, so no matter where you drag that, it's going to um, be a perfect circle. You make a new layer for this and name this new layer moon or sun, depending on what you want it to be. I'm just going to say both because I'm not too sure. And we're going to dump white into it. To get white, um, you can go to... Um, you can do all Fs, that would give you white, and you dump the color in. You can now, at this point, move this layer around. You can change the size of it, put it where you want it to be, if you want it, but no matter what, it should be behind the land, all the land masses. So it should be right in front of the sky at this point. So you could put it up in the air, you could put it like a sunset or a, a moonset. Is there such a thing, moonset? So you figure out where you want it to be. Uh, the other thing we're going to do is we're going to lower the opacity just to kind of let the atmosphere kind of show through a little bit so it doesn't look so close. makes it look farther away if you reduce that opacity. So this next step is pretty easy because we're going to let, the, uh, let Photoshop do the job. And this is adding clouds. So we're um, pretty easy. We're just going to add a layer and we're going to apply a filter. So we're going to go to add new layer and this layer is going to be between the sky and the moon. So it's going to be right above that sky layer, right above the gradient. We're going to call this one clouds. So what we're going to do is we're going to go, first of all, set it up so you have black and white as your foreground and background. If you click on that little tiny icon, that little tiny black and white, it'll, it'll set it up to black and white. And that's the, the way that these clouds are going to work. So make sure that that is selected black in the foreground, white in the background, or vice versa. It doesn't make, make really any difference. So we're going to go up to Filter, and then we go down to Render, and then we go to Clouds. So you'll see it just puts this uh, mottled fuzziness um, in front. So that's probably too dramatic. We're going to lower the opacity quite a bit. And we lower it down to whatever our taste is, um, if you want it to be real, real subtle, you lower it way down. But you can see that it makes a huge difference, even if you have the opacity of this layer way, way down. There it is, very flat, but now it just gives it a little bit of something to it. And that's about it. If you're happy with it, 
time to move on. This last step is probably the most complex, but it is very, very versatile. So we have these land masses that are very flat, like the desert, but we're going to add some life to this. We're going to add some trees uh, to this. So, so it doesn't look so flat and it gives it a sense of realism. So if we, if you've gone through class where we downloaded brushes already, you can actually skip a lot of this video. But as a review, or if you need a, you know, need to revisit this, um, let's go. So you're going to be searching in Google brushes and you can go Photoshop, you can type in free, so let's go to Brushes Free Photoshop. There's a couple of already pretty good websites that I use. I use my Photoshop brushes. I also use BrushEasy. You can try some other ones. So basically it'll allow you to download brushes that you can apply, you know, download and apply to Photoshop. So as you're looking, and again, we, we want to focus on trees for this one, but there are different types of brushes that you could use. So as you're looking here for brushes, again, you're looking for trees. If you have anything that says premium, you're going to be paying for it, so you're looking for free. You don't want anything too cartoony. You want them to be realistic. You also don't want ones that have a lot of value and um, sort of um, gradients to it. You want it to look like a silhouette, black and white. So you can try some, and maybe if you look at them and you find that they have too much of a gradient, you might not want to use them. Again, you want them to be very black and white, very contrasty. So you can definitely explore some, take a look at them. Even if you download them and then find that you apply them and, and they don't really work out, uh, you can always jump and go to a different one. You can even do palm trees if you want. Um, but yeah, I'd like you to stick to trees if you would. So you can search around Brush Easy. You can also go to My Photoshop Brushes. You can try some other websites. So let's click on this one. This gives us a nice variety. So it gives us five different trees, which is nice. Because you also don't want to put down the same trees each time. OK, so it downloads it. It goes into uh, your Downloads folder, which also appears down in this footer. And if you double click on Mr. it. Mr. Burdett, please report to the nurse's office. Mr. Burdett, please report to the nurse's office. Okay, so it, you double click on the zip drive, that zip folder, and you're going to get an ABR. That's the type of file that we're going to be downloading. It's going to be an ABR. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just drag this to the desktop temporarily, and that ABR file you can bring over to your own folder, but it's .abr. Okay, so when we go to Photoshop, that is what we're downloading. You need to open up that ABR file, and you need to know where you where you put it once you open it up. All right, so we're going to go to the brushes, the brush tool, and then you're going to click on that little drop down arrow, which gives you some of the settings. You have size and you have hardness, and down below there are some folders. We're going to add it by going to the gear, and we're going to go to import brushes. So it's at this point you're going to go ahead and you're going to find that ABR file and you open it. So those folders down below, you're going to see you have added a new folder. And here are your brushes that were in that ABR file. So right now it's set up where it looks like a streak. So you can change that view of it because you, you're not going to be applying it like drag. You're going to be doing it more like a stamp. You're not going to be like dragging this like a brush. So what you can do is you can change the view of that pretty easily. Go up to the gear and you see it has checked brush name. You don't need the brush name. You can uncheck it. Where it says brush stroke, uh, you don't need that. What you do want is the brush tip. So you can just switch it out. And you can also make these little icons bigger by dragging the, the pointer on the bottom to the right. So it gives you a better idea of what you're, what you're applying. Okay. So we have, you know, we have you know, 15 of them, 15 good um, good trees. And if you wanted to delete it, you can right click on that folder and delete that group if you want to. So when you apply it, 
you just don't want to kind of just click without thinking. You want these to be the same color as the land that it's going to be sitting on. So if you start off in the front, you're going to be using that darker color. You're going to put it on that darker layer. And also, keep in mind the size of the trees. As they go farther back, creating an illusion, and as things get farther away from you, they're going to get smaller. And as they're closer to you, they're going to be bigger. So you can use the size by dragging it in that size window. But if you look at your keyboard and you see the letter P, the brackets to the right um, will make, the, make it larger and smaller. So you kind of figure out where you want these to be. Make sure you start off, make sure you're on the right layer and you have the right color selected and you have the good size. So it's size, color, and layer. So we have the size right, we have the layer correct, we just need that color. So we use the eyedropper tool and sampled that color. I wouldn't put these big trees in the middle. I would probably put them off on the side. And also, you don't need them to be um, way, way tall. They can be kind of low. As they get, as they're closer to you, they're lower in that picture. And as they get smaller, they're going to get higher. So, especially the bigger trees, I'm going to tend not to, I would not use the same tree. Especially, like I said, when, you, when they get farther away, you, you have a little bit more, you can do a couple the same trees but when they're really really close you might want to get two or three of your favorites again make it bigger and I'm working on mountain one I'm working on that first one and you can overlap them too they can kind of be clustered together a little bit you can see I'm kind of purposely not putting them uh, real real like in the middle so now I'm working on the second mountain I picked the color I made the, the brushes a little smaller, and again, I don't want to have it like really tall like that. You know, it doesn't have to be. It's, it's kind of too far up, so I'm going to work down a little bit, and I'm just going to overlap. So, you keep doing this process. You're going to feel like the maker of the universe doing this. Like, I put tree here. It's kind of fun. You can always undo. Um, you can make some decisions. smaller. There we go. So I tend to steer away from the middle of my picture, at least at the beginning, or at least keep maybe the trees really, really low in the picture plane. Um, and then as I work farther back, that's when I start to want to put more trees in the middle. So again, I go to a second layer, next layer, and I'm going to change the color, and I'm selecting a different layer. select the color, I'm on the correct layer, and now it's just picking the right size. It's going to go smaller than the rest of them. And now I feel a little more comfortable putting them in the middle, so they're not going to be like in the way. And again, I can always add trees later on. If I don't do enough and I want to put more in, I can put more in. But I'm kind of being a little particular. Now I'm in the Mountain 4, so I'm going to pick that lighter color, and I'm on that layer, and the size, I'm making the size correct, a little bit smaller, and even if you have them like kind of popping up, just get the top of that tree popping up. Mm. That looks pretty cool. I don't really want to do any in the background, and if I do decide to do weight ones from the background, I, you know, do it very sparingly. I make them teeny tiny. You know, maybe just a couple, kind of cluster them together to just change the, you know, give the uh, the silhouette of the the, the land a little bit of texture. And as I said, if, as you start working on this, if you want to make any changes, you can certainly do that. But you just need to be aware of the color, the layer, and the size. Um, 
I'm going back and I'm adding one to that, la that layer three, mounting layer three. I want it to be about the same size. So hopefully you've kind of enjoyed this process a little bit. I've had students put tr like even put like some birds in the background, like in the sky and stuff like that. So you can see at this point, if I wanted to change, you know, the the height of some of these, I can do that. But I don't want to I don't want to show the the bottom or the sides. So it would just be kind of straight up. Um, I don't want to stretch it out bigger because then the trees are going to get bigger and that that might mess with the illusion as well. But yeah, you, you have a little bit of flexibility to work. Okay. So there's also changes that you can make. You can move the moon or sun around. You can change the size of it. You can even change the gradient at, at this point because as you, as you see, all these layers are separated. So even if you end up wanting to do something you know, different in a layer, you can try it out. You can even add another layer. Instead of uh, putting it directly on the sky, I can put another blank layer and try this out separately. So here's one where I'm using very, very similar colors. I'm using all cool colors, and you can see that it dramatically changes the look of the image. So hopefully you guys have some fun with this and you explore some of the possibilities. If you do a couple of versions, you can. Now, when, when you save it, you want to save it as a copy. So whether you go up to File, Save as Copy, or you can hit Save as Copy, it'll give you those options of a lot of different types of files, and you want to save it as a JPEG. When you submit it, you want to save it as a JPEG uh, to submit to both Artsonia and Google Classroom. And like I said, if you wanted to do a couple of versions, you can.